Hey, and welcome to another Revit video. In this video, we're going to look at all of the toggles when it comes to PyRevit. I've covered PyRevit in previous episodes where we have looked at tab colors. We've looked at just an overall intro of what PyRevit is and what it can do for us. Uh, but now we want to look at these specific toggles. So and if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It helps me out quite a lot. It tells me that you might have learned something too. Okay, getting into toggles now within PyRevit. It's a fairly simple subject, uh, but it will be really helpful to be able to use. <laughs> so here we go. The first one is minify, <laughs> funny word, Revit UI. And it basically reduces the list of these Revit tabs we have open. So I'm going to just click it and... Uh, nothing's going to happen. Well, we haven't configured it, and that's just the way it is because we can see that it, it is active with that orange dot telling us everything that we need to know. So where can we access everything that we want to do with uh, minifying <laughs> this Revit UI? Well, we would actually end up shift-clicking it because if you hover over this, you can see shift plus click to customize. Okay, hold shift and then click. And look at this, we have this minify UI config, which is really cool. So I'm gonna expand this so we can see all of the, of the different tabs that we have in Revit. And that's quite a lot. Um, the point being here is maybe we don't wanna see these all the time. And I can't say there's a place or a reason why I would want to hide some of them, um, but I do know that there are a ton that I don't use all the time, but I'd wanna have quicker access to them. Now, before we go into this, I do want to show you where you can turn some of these on or off that or at least work with Revit. We can go to options, and then we can go to user interface, and then we can go to configure. So these are basically what ships with Revit as far as the tabs. And depending on how you've installed Revit, they may not all show up. I like them here just because it's, you know, I have a, a broader uh, spectrum of tools that I can use if I ever need to. And... So that's the basic reason for that. But most of the time, I don't need to see them. And I also don't want to go to the trouble of going into those options and having to toggle them on off individually. So what I can do here is say, ooh, you know, I actually want to, I don't want to see these in-place models and masses. I don't need to see the, the create. I don't need to see the add-ins. Um, I don't analyze the systems precast or steel like most of these things because I'm an architect and not an engineer I'm not using those all the time so I don't need to work with those most of the time which is okay and so what we can do at this point is hide selected tabs in minified mode which is saying I don't want to see these whenever that's toggled on so let's go ahead and do that and as soon as I do that well nothing happens and that's because I haven't toggled this on when I toggle this on Immediately, I, I lose a bunch of tabs, which is awesome. And so let's say we want to get ridiculous with this, and we just decide, ah, I don't want to see any of them. You know, I'm recording a video, and I want to make this as professional looking as possible, and I don't want to have any tabs. Well, I can hide them there, just like this. And look, <laughs> I'm actually left with a few, and you'll notice what I'm left with. I'm left with PyRevit because PyRevit controls this. <laughs> I'm left with the Modify, Manage, View, Annotate, and Insert. Some of the, I don't know why, these are left uh, obviously they're out of the box from Revit and Autodesk uh, but apparently this is what PyRevit slash Revit thinks we need to have just as a baseline <laughs> to function but that's okay it does minimize it quite a bit and I can always come back in here and, and uncheck a few if I don't want to see them things like that I can toggle them all or not that type of thing and I can just see them all again if I want to really cool stuff turning this toggle this on and off I can see yep there they are cool really good you know easy stuff it's going to help me quite a lot when we want to minify it cool all right moving on to importer so looking at the description here it says toggle the visibility of imported categories and this is going to apply to dwgs or anything like importer which is great and so when i zoom out here i actually have this ridiculous topography and it might be that i don't want to see this <laughs> because a lot of times i don't want to see imported cads i actually want to delete them but regardless we'll get to that in a future video um i don't i don't want to see it i don't want to deal with it i don't want to have to find it in the visibility graphics and close or whatever that kind of thing so i can simply toggle this on and immediately that's gone like it's just gone now there's not a great indication as to this being on or off because it's either on or off and there's for some reason no indication given to us that is okay now what i want i want to show you what's actually happening we come into the visibility graphics of this view, I've got this imported category, and it's just this topography of this site plan DWG. 
And so we're going to actually go ahead and toggle this off. So we don't see it and go back into visibility graphics imports and we can see it has turned off all imported categories regardless of what it is it's just off so yes that saves us a few clicks and we know what's happening but it's right here it's one click it's easy done really simple stuff and then finally section box now whenever i click this if i don't have a section box i don't have a section box so before we end up using this let's go ahead and make a section box so I'm going to make my section box and, and of course, yes, there's my section box. Now, maybe I want to cut this down a bit uh, to give us a little bit more of a reason to why we might be using a section box. Uh, we maybe want to look at this here and you know, what we can do is we can hide this. We can always hide that. I don't want to do that necessarily um, because I can come up here to section box and just click that and immediately it's gone. It's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. And now what is it doing? Well, is it hidden? Yeah, sure enough, it's hidden. So that is saving me a click and a hot keystroke. That's fine. Nonetheless, it is easy up here. And the cool thing is I can always come up here and see and check this. And maybe I have a section box. Maybe I don't. Obviously, you'll know if you have one here. Uh, but if you don't see one, just click that. Boom, it's back. You're, you're good to go. It's easy to move things around. It's also really easy to toggle in and out and get a better view of your actual section, <laughs> which is cool. So finally, we have sync views, which I think is going to be uh, a very underrated, let's say that. So um, I'm in the same project, as you can see, my tab is both red, both of these are red. Uh, but maybe we want to come over here to this site plan view. So if I am looking at this nice site plan view, and I turn sync views on, we could see that, ooh, yes, it turns orange, so it gives me an idea like, ooh, it's on. Now, whenever I come over to level one, I can see, eh, you know, I'm about that zoomed in, um, but I wanna like go ahead and zoom way out here and then come over to my site. And look, I'm just as zoomed out. Now, <laughs> we can see this better when I actually move these side by side, and we can see I have to go to the, the actual file. And you can see what happens. Everything is basically staying in sync with the view, which is cool. Now, where would I use this? Well, this is probably not the best um, way to show it off because it really, it really isn't. Um, but what kind of an application would be? Well, let's go ahead and put this site plan back. Uh, but the best way would probably be a floor plan. Let's say this is you know level one floor plan. Then we can go to a reflected ceiling plan. Of course, there aren't any of this in this project by default. So we can go to view, plan view, reflected ceiling plan, level one. Okay. And so with this, we'll go ahead and go back to PyRevit, unsync this view. And maybe we can, we can zoom in here and see, okay, well, yeah, this is a terrible looking view, but I want to look specifically at this view and this, this clause of these few rooms. I want to deal with the RCP here. I can sync my views and then immediately go back to level one. And look, I'm looking right at it. It jumps right to it. And if I zoom out maybe to look at this kitchen or dining in the floor plan, I can go over to the RCP and it jumps that, like this is really cool. It It's gonna see, literally sync my views. It's doing exactly what it says. And it's not view dependent, as in you have to, you can only sync one view. You can go from one to the other and it's gonna look at the one versus the other and sync them all together as you go to each and activate each view, which is cool. Now, I don't see myself using that all that much, but it is really cool that it, I know that PyRevit has the capability of doing that in a simple toggle, a simple button click. It's easy because there are a lot of times where I need to find something here and there, and it's a really great way to find something in floor plan and realize, ooh, what does it look like on this other level in the exact same place? You can monitor that really easily. So that's good to do, and whether it's an RCP, whether it's a floor plan, site plan, works all the same. And honestly, it would work with section, you know, just the same dimension. Uh, maybe not try to do plan and section, but you know, you, you kind of know what you're getting with that. But that's really cool, sync views, and obviously we just toggle it off and we're good. So we have looked at all of the different toggles. Of course, tab coloring I did in a completely separate video, which is all of these colors up here. If you haven't seen that, check that out first, because it's really kind of cool. I'm definitely going to be using something like this moving forward because I want to see what colors of projects I have open and basically just see the different projects I have open based on color, which is really nice to see. 
other than that, these were all fairly simple toggles that we went over in this video. If you happen to learn something, which I hope you did, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. In the future, we'll look at all these other different panels when it comes to PyRevit, as well as the different types of extensions that we have and everything with that, because there's a ton of tools. I can imagine there will be videos that cover a single specific tool. So stick around for those. Hope you enjoy this video. See you in the next one. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very, very much for watching.